Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my Storytime friends. Welcome to the Rockbridge Regional Library Storytime. My name is Miss Wendy, and I'm so glad you could be here today. Let's get started. Uh, first, we always do our hello song. So here's how it goes. Some American Sign Language in there. So we'll say hello, and then friends are our two fingers, and they hug, and then it's time to say hello. Okay, we'll do it twice. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello and welcome to story time. That's more sign language. Story time. Excellent. Okay, so you may have noticed my special dancers at the beginning of story time. Yes, they look like caterpillars, but they're actually worms. Today's story time is all about earthworms because I've been seeing a lot of them in my garden lately, especially when it rains. And I'm a little bit, a little bit creeped out by them. So I thought I better learn some more. And it turns out earthworms are super cool and super important for our gardens and for our earth. So I have some books today about earthworms. So let's get started. But of course, we have to start by figuring out what day of the week it is. I suspect you already know, but let's look anyway. Okay, first, how many days of the week are there? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's right, seven days of the week. Now let's see if we know their names. You have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I wonder what day it is today. Okay, well, we have a song to help us find out. So here's how that song goes. We'll hold up our seven fingers because there are seven days in the week. And here's how it goes. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What is today? Well, it's the middle of the week. Well, it's the day that starts with a W. That's right, it's Wednesday, the middle of the week, my favorite, because we've gotten to the middle and that's good news, almost to the weekend. Okay, all right, so we know what day it is. Now I have one question for you. Are you ready for a story? I am, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna scoot my camera back just a little bit. And I've got my ukulele here. And we're gonna move around a little bit while we sing this song just to get some wiggles out so that when it comes time to read, we'll be ready. We'll start with clapping our hands. Okay. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Okay, because we're learning about earthworms, if you're ready for a story, squirm. Do we know what the word squirm means? It's kind of like wiggle, okay? If you're ready for a story, squirm around. If you're ready for a story, squirm around. I don't know what that is. 
If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, squirm around. Nobody really knows, but we just move around. <laughs> okay, this time, one thing earthworms do very, very well is dig. So we're going to dig a hole. If you're ready for a story, dig a hole. If you're ready for a story, dig a hole. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, dig a hole. I've got my shovel. Don't actually use a ukulele as a shovel. <laughs> I'm sure you know that. Okay, and finally, if you're ready for a story, sit real still, and then we freeze. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. How long can you hold still? Oh, it's so hard. Oh, okay, okay. Much better. <laughs> All right, and before our first book, five deep breaths. That just helps us to be ready to listen and learn. Okay, so thumb and first finger together. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Middle finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Ring finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Pinky and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And thumbs up because you love earthworms. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Well, if you don't love earthworms, you just might at the end of this story time. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for our first book. Okay. Oh, yeah. Diary of a Worm. This is a good one to begin with because, you know, it's good to get into the mind of a worm. <laughs> Figure out what, how do worms think? So this is Diary of a Worm and it's written by Doreen Cronin and the pictures are by Harry Bliss. Oh, they got some photographs. The earthworm family has been doing things. There they are at Compost Island. Oh, in this first tunnel. This comes to us from Joanna Coulter Press. Cutler Books. Excuse me. Joanna Cutler Books. All right. Entry number one, March 20th. Mom says, there are three things I should remember. Number one, the earth gives us everything we need. Me. Look, I guess that's where he lives. Number two. When we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. Must make tunnel. Help earth breathe. And number three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. March 29th. Today I tried to teach a spider how to dig. First of all, his legs got stuck. I think I have twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. I give up. Tomorrow, he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. March 30th. Worms cannot walk upside down. <laughs> he's holding on by a thread. A web. April 4th. Fishing season started today. We'll, we, we all dug deeper. Gotta go down low. April 10th. It rained all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. Hopscotch is a very dangerous game. <laughs> April 15th. I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry that I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. Boy, 
He was hungry. April 20th. I snuck up on some kids in the park today. They didn't hear me coming. I wiggled right between them and screamed. I love it when they do that. And they screamed. May 1st. Grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said good morning to the first aunt I saw. Good morning. There were 600 more of them in line. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, nice to see you. Howdy, good morning. I stood there all day. May 8th. Had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds playing hopscotch. Mom says I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to bed. <laughs> May 15th. I got to a, into a fight with, a, with Spider today. He told me you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. May 16th. I made Spider laugh so hard he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs? Ha <laughs> ha. May 28th. Last night I went to a, the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's all we can do. <laughs> they don't have anything else. June 5th. Today we made macaroni necklaces in art class. I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. You're so very talented, says Dad. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends looking in the mirror, her face will always look like her rear end. <laughs> Spider thought that was really funny. Mom did not. <laughs> June 4th. Ju excuse me, July 4th. When I grow up, I want to be a Secret Service agent. Spider, Spider says I will have to be very careful because the president might step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> July 18th. Three things I don't like about being a worm. I can't chew gum. Bubble gum, long lasting. Ooh. Number two, I can't have a dog. Can we keep him, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, all that homework. Digging a history, soil, through the ages. My casting journal, night crawlers, and compost 101. Big studies. July 29th. Three good things about being a worm. Number one, I never have to go to the dentist. No cavities, no teeth either. Number two. I never get in trouble for tracking mud through the house. And number three, I never have to take a bath. Who's my grubby little boy? The dirtier, the better. August 1st. It's not always easy being a worm. We're very small. And sometimes per people forget we're even here. But like mom always says, the earth never forgets we're here. That's right. What a nice little life that little worm has. Very nice. Well, there's a comic too, Superworm. The end. June 5th. I get the feeling I'm being watched. <laughs> the ladybug. Okay. So, good news. My little friends my little worm friends at the beginning have some fun worm facts to share with us. Shall we invite them in? Yes. Okay, let me see if they're here. Wormies. Wormies. Are you guys here? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, here they come. Hi. Hi. I'm Blue Worm. And I'm Green Worm. We're not really blue or green. We're usually brown or pinkish color, 
but you know, today we're blue and green. So I have some interesting facts about earthworms. All right, fact number one, worms, earthworms have, guess how many hearts? Five hearts. What? What? Five hearts? We have five hearts. We have five hearts. Wow, that's a lot of hearts. Better for loving. Ha 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 That's so funny. Okay, I've got one. Can you guess how long the biggest earthworm is that science has recorded? What's the longest earthworm? Hmm. Three, three feet? No. Five feet? No. Well, how many? How many feet? 22 feet. That's bigger than this room. I know. I, this is wow. Maybe if we eat more leaves and dirt, we could be 22 feet long. Maybe. Okay, I have another really cool fact about us earthworms. What is it? Well, do you think we have lungs? Lungs to breathe? Well, I do like breathing, so something is happening. Well, no, we do not have lungs. We breathe through our skin. So we come up from deep in the earth, to where the air is and we absorb air through our skin. What? Who knew? It seems so effortless. We just go up and we're good. I know. It's amazing. Wow. Okay. Last one. Now, this is going to seem a little strange considering I have two of them right now, but the truth is earthworms don't have eyes. What? What? That's right. Technically, we don't have eyes. However, we can still tell if it's light or dark. We can sense light or dark, but we cannot see. Uh, hold on. I feel like I can see. Well, right now, today, in story time, you can, but in life, no, you can't. Oh, okay. I, I'll accept that. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for sharing some cool facts. No problem, Miss Wendy. Yeah, yeah, we've got more. We'll be back later. Well, fabulous, friends. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye, story time, friends. All right. Very good. Okay. That is very interesting. 22 feet long. That's probably about the size of a school bus. Whoa. <gasps> I don't think I'd want to see that. <laughs> uh, no eyes, but they can tell if it's dark or light. So if they're going up to the right direction to find the air and the water. And what was the other one? Oh, they breathe through their skin. That is so incredible. But that's why they need water. If it dries out, it's hard to breathe. Okay, let's read another book about earthworms. Here's another worm. You know, these worms, they've got feelings. And I don't think we... Oh, I don't think we pay attention enough. So this book is called Carl. Carl and the Meaning of Life by Deborah Friedman. Goodness, okay. Well, let's find out what happens to Carl. And this comes to us from Viking Press. I guess that's Carl. Carl was not a bird. Carl was not a bear or a beaver. Carl was an earthworm. He lived underground, moving, always moving, burrowing, tunneling, digesting, dead leaves, feasting and casting turning hard dirt into fluffy soil day after day. Ooh. Why? asked a field mouse gathering seeds. Why do you do that? Why? 
Carl did not know why. But now he needed to find out. I'll be right back, he told his field mouse. He spotted Rabbit. Maybe she knew. Why do I do what I do? He asked her. Oh, goodness, dear, she said. I do not know. I do what I do for my babies. But Carl didn't have babies. Fox appeared. Carl turned to Fox. Why do I do what I do? Asked Carl. Who do I do it for? For whom? Replied the fox. Alas, my meal awaits. I am here for the hunt. But Carl did not want to hunt. Why are you talking to a fox? Cried a squirrel. Carl was started, because the field mouse, mouse is waiting and wants to know what I'm here for. The squirrel declared, I'm here to plant trees. Trees are where I sleep. But Carl could not sleep, not high in a tree, and not without an answer for the mouse. He pushed on. What? And on, hours turned to days until the soil was no longer fluffy. The ground around Carl turned barren and dry. Who? While he continued to search, why? <sighs> but the birds had flown off to find grasses and fluff. The bear trundled away and to look for berries. Soon there was nobody left to talk to. What about me? cried Carl. The clouds were silent. So was the air. I will never find out, he sniffled. <laughs> then Carl heard his sniffle echo, followed by a... <gasps> I can't find any grubs, a voice cried. It was the saddest ground beetle he had ever seen. Carl peeked under a stone. No grubs. Then he poked at the dirt. It was hard like a rock. Where was his fluffy soil? Suddenly, Carl knew what he needed to do. I'll be back, he promised. For hours into days and weeks into months, Carl munched digested, left castings, and tunneled, and turned that hard dirt back into rich soil. <gasps> you made my seeds grow, said the mouse. Clover blossomed once again, and the rabbit came back with her kits. The squirrel returned to plant new trees. The fox was lured by the hunt, and all of them able to do what they do. How? Well, why not ask Carl? I think he figured it out. Very good. So this book is wonderful because it helps us remember that earthworms are so important to not just our soil, but so many animals that rely on the soil for their food and for all the things they need. So again, earthworms are awesome. I hope you enjoyed that book about Carl. Have you ever named an earthworm you found? Do you like to find earthworms after a big rain? I looked for some earthworms after it rained a day or two ago, but I did not find any. So I thought here's a song we could sing that might just get some earthworms to show up. Next time it rains, I will be singing this song outside. And it's called I'm a Little Earthworm, and it's to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. And so here's how it goes. And then we're gonna do some tunneling. We're gonna do some wiggling. And we're gonna dig into the ground 
And here's how it goes. I'm a little earthworm to I'm a little teapot. I'm a little earthworm, watch me go. Or I can wiggle fast and slow. I wiggle all around, then back I go. Down to the ground, to the home I know. That's right. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, got our wiggly worms. Okay, I'm a little earthworm, watch me go. I can wiggle fast or I can wiggle slow. I wiggle all around and back I go. Down to the ground, to the home I know. Very good, very good. All right, you can sing that song to your earthworm if you find one, if we get rain again. Okay, I've got one more book. But before we read that book, I thought it was important to show you a picture of an earthworm. There's one, a real earthworm, five hearts, no eyes, breathe through their skin and helps keep our soil fluffy and moist and ready for plants and animals. So do you like to touch earthworms? I like to touch earthworms that are on paper. <laughs> okay, so this book is called Noodle and Lou. And I just think this is a great story of friendship. So you can guess who Noodle is. And there's Lou. And this is by Liz Garten Scanlon and illustrated by Arthur Howard. And this comes to us from Beach Lane Books. Some days don't go well, right from the start. Noodle woke up with a rain cloud heart. His bright side was money, but muddy. His high points sank low. The grass grew much greener in other worms' rows. Some days are like this. What's a worm gonna do? Well, if he's Noodle, he'll lean on his Lou. Hey, Lou! My head has no eyes, Noodle said, feeling glum. So life is a surprise, Lou said to his chum. And I don't have a beak, said Noodle, quite blue. But you're long and so sleek, which is perfect for you. But also, no feet, Noodle said with a shrug. I think you're complete, and Lou gave him a hug. I'm dirty and mucky. You're wiggly and plucky. I'm skinny and bare, with your own special flair. Birds think I'm a treat. You are pretty sweet. This went on for a bit, each line like the last. Noodle quite gloomy and Lou just steadfast. But Lou meant every word, even Noodle could see. All those high flying types, and Lou Bird likes me. And in spite of himself, Noodle had to admit that he and his friend were a very fine fit. So he lifted his chin, crawled out of his rut, Gave his sorry old slither a jaunty new strut. And Lou, he was tickled. See, you just never know, he said with a grin, how a day's gonna go. What a worm! But really, thought Noodle, the bigger surprise... is seeing yourself through your best buddy's eyes. 
Isn't that so nice? What a great friend. Not letting him sulk down and just reminding him how awesome he is. Good job, Lou. The end. I just think that's such a sweet story. Un unexpected friends. Noodle and Lou. Excellent. Well, do you have any uh, earthworm friends? Have you ever have you ever had an earthworm friend? They're pretty cool. All right, my friends. Well, that was story time. Here's some big announcements. Summer reading is coming. Signups begin June 1st, and when you sign up, you can pick out a free book. And if you read for 20 minutes a day for a month, you get a free ice cream. And that is not to mention all the afternoon programs that we'll be doing all summer long. So come to the library. We've got a flyer with all of the information for you. And I hope to see you because we will be doing lots of activities outside, specifically story time. We'll begin outside June 16th. It's a Wednesday at 1030 and we'll do it right out front where the picnic tables are so we can be together again. Hooray! <laughs> So, but until then, we still have to wash our hands, okay? Everybody, let's keep washing our hands. Let's do tops and bottoms twice. One, two, three. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean again. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. And if you sing that song while you're washing your hands, you'll be good to go. But until tomorrow there is a 1030 uh, baby and toddler story time, and then we'll be back next Wednesday. So until then, I shall see you later, alligator, in a while, crocodile, give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish, see you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur, take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye, my friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great week.